The Greatest Shepherd and Region also includes Tatura, an easy 20 minute drive. It's a smaller town with a population below 5,000, but history drips from every building, including the Tatura Museum, which tells a story most Australians don't know. Where did it all start? Oh, it started back about 1982 when the museum was first opened. The original buildings, we had visitors came up and said, oh, what do you know about the war camps? And the, the people who were in charge said, oh, war camps. Originally, it started off, people came and then they brought gifts of, of memorabilia that they had in their camps. Mate, it's a part of Australia's history that's rarely spoken about for, for whatever reason. Why were the camps actually here? Well, when war broke out in World, World War II, this we're, we're talking about, uh, there was a lot of German and Italian people uh, circulating in the community who were doing a wonderful job in their work. And as soon as uh, Great Britain declared war on Germany, well, they were treated as, as enemy. So they rounded them up and they interned them. And this down the road from here, there's a mansion called the Darangal Mansion. It was a 65 room place. So they commandeered that and they put the first lot of internees in there. But they built these purpose-built camps then to contain the, the internees. And as demand grew, so did the size of the camps. In Camp 3 there was a, a very um, exclusive uh, schooling going on. They had school every day and they, they were serious about their education. The um, older people, uh, there was a lot of uh, problems with barbed wire fever, they called it. They're just being locked up and... What's the most common comment you get from visitors to the museum? They can't imagine that uh, they can have made so many things from so little. For instance, um, they turned up buttons on lathes that they made. How many people were in these camps? Well, when the war broke out, the um, the... Australian government and the Canadian government were, were asked to accommodate 6,000 people. But when, um, after Dunkirk and that, it got up to 25,000. By 1947, most of the uh, internees had been uh, either returned or they went before a tribunal and if they could prove that they had somewhere to go and somewhere to work, they were released and they could go and um, start life in Australia, which a lot of them did. I'm really glad I dropped in. I feel far more enlightened. Thanks, George.